In the area of Colorado I live in, salt-affected soils are a huge issue, and coal bed methane runoff water is contributing significantly to this problem. Many local farmers' land has been rendered almost useless due to being flooded with coal bed methane runoff water. After seeing such great results with my first experiment, I was curious if mycorrhizal fungi could help plants grow in this otherwise barren soil. In the oh, Again, the results were amazing. The vast majority of the seeds planted in the microgroup sprouted and produced spot pods right on schedule. The plants were healthy and showed no signs of salt stress. And the untreated coal bed methane group, the plants, uh, no seeds sprouted. Yeah, no, sp no seeds sprouted. <laughs> you can see there, no seeds sprouted. And I even, I even, like towards the end of the experiment, I even planted the coal bed methane group, or the control group again, and still no seeds sprouted. So that shows how significantly the mycorrhizal fungi helps. Oh, <laughs> I'll move on. <laughs> um, but yeah, those plants are so healthy they need a trellis to hold them up. So that's all soil, same soil than the back row and the front row? Yeah, same soil, just... And you inoculated the back ones just with, and that's it? Yeah. Is what part of Colorado? Um, we live near the southern part of Colorado, La Vida, Walsenburg, Kachara. Um, so you used a bunch of spores like that, the ones you could purchase? Um, yeah, they're actually coated with clay, so they're dormant, like when you get them, and then you mix them with water, or you can coat the seeds with them, and it activates the fungus and starts the growth process. Um, <clears throat> All of these experiments we replicated between three and five times to ensure accurate results. My indoor experimentation was extremely promising, so this year I wanted to test my findings in the natural world. I found it difficult to find farmers willing to let me introduce mycorrhizal fungi to their land, <laughs> but I was offered a piece of high ele elevation dry metal land to work with from some very generous landowners. Initial soil samples indicated a pH of 8.5 and depleted nitrogen and phosphorus levels. Potassium was acceptable. I dug and planted three myco beds and three control beds with organic, non-genetically modified uh, small sweet corn, and the results to date are amazing. The germination rate in the myco group is above 80% compared to 31% in the control group. And there are currently almost 30 ears of corn maturing in the micro group compared to only 5 ears in the control group. No fertilizer has been applied during this experiment and the beds have been watered minimally. Uh, here are some photos of day 49. Um, hold on. Yeah, this, this side right here, you can kind of see the barrier of rock. This is all the... This is the micro group. That's the control group. Is it? Okay, well, I can't see it very well, but um, at the moment there is there's not a significant difference other than consistent plant growth. So I'm gonna switch now to the microgroup. He doesn't. He can't see which photos. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the control group. That's the microgroup, both on the same day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the microgroup is a lot more consistent and just a lot healthier overall. <clears throat> um, oh, next pick. Wait, is this the right pick? Mm. So there's two different beds, or this is both the control and the micro group separated by rocks, one on the one side and one on the other. Is that yeah. what I'm seeing? Yeah. There's actually three beds. It's kind of hard for the camera angle to be able to see, but each side has three beds separated by. Um, uh, by a barrier that's wide enough. There's a six foot barrier in the middle to keep the mycorrhizal fungi from jumping from the mycorrhizal beds to the control beds. So okay. that should be the control bed. What day is that, Dylan? Uh, this is day 60. Okay, that's day 60. So there's the control bed. And there's the control bed. Yeah. And yeah, that's.
that's the control group, right? Um, okay, next picture. <laughs> okay, as you can see, uh, there are healthy tassels and ears of corn in the micro group on day 70. Healthy tassels and ears of corn. While working on my project this year, I've learned a great deal about no-till farming technique and how to reno renew and enrich soil through c crop rotations and other environmentally friendly methods. A productive and sustain sustainable agricultural system depends on maintaining biodiversity. I plan to use these methods in combination with mycorrhizal fungi next year to help formulate a living example of sustainable agricultural techniques. Life depends on he healthy soil, and put simply, fungi make soil, so nurturing our fungal population is critical to our own survival. Franklin de Roosevelt once said that a nation destroys its soil, destroys itself. I believe this to be true, and that now more than ever, we need to develop sustainable ways of living. Thank you for listening. Any questions? Have you done any possible studies with the alkaline spots, like south of Sawatch and like that? Um, 